Blessings, friends, and hallelujah. Welcome to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is Lord over all lords and King over all kings. Well, this morning is March the 19th of the year 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, which says, Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, friends, these are challenging words. When we read these words, I hope when you read these words that you bring yourself to a standstill because God's word is very clear here. If we love the world, his love is not in us. Why? Because as we have determined through many studies, we cannot serve two masters. Now, this world is a master, and there are many who serve it religiously. They wake up every morning, and every moment of their day is spent on what this world can bring to them. They work their fingers to the bones to acquire some new gadget to go to some new place, to do some new adventure, to buy some new thing, with little, if not none at all, reflection, contemplation, or imagination about the afterlife, about the world to come, about how they live in this life will affect the next life. They are so caught in today, so caught in the moment and all the fancies that it can offer them that whether they realize it or not, they become God's enemy. And so let's look at our text this morning in detail. Love not the world. Do not show affection to this world. Do not desire the things of this world. I mean, what is love? If you love another person, you desire that person. You show that person affection. You give that person your time and your attention. And so we're told to give no attention to the world, to give no time to the world. Now, right now, you should be feeling some guilt in the things of this world and how they rob you and steal your time. So he says, do not do these things, even the things that are in the world. Do not give your time and affection to do not give your attention to. Well, now many of you would say, well, I live in this world. It's going to take some of my time, some of my attention. It doesn't have to. I'm not talking about your career. I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about the way you spend your free time. And for many of us, that's the things in this world that we give ourselves to. But we're being warned, told, and commanded here not to do that. Because if you do this, then your love is not in the Father, your love is in the world. So don't lie to yourself, don't deceive yourself thinking that you're okay when you're not. Now friends, it's easy for us to point out some of the apparent things that present themselves in our lives, the music that we listen to, the movies that we watch, the time that we spend in television, the time that we spend in video games, sports and entertainment, and all of us are guilty from a scale of 1 to 10, the question is, how guilty are we? We should be eliminating some of these things from our lives, scaling down to where eventually we arrive at zero. And what's interesting is we are told that for every action, there is an opposite reaction. And so what that tells us is the more that we deepen ourselves in the things of God, the more consumed we become in the things of God, the more distant the things of this world will become to where you will not only be depriving yourself of the entertainment of this world, the material possessions of this world, the luxury and fascinations that this world has to offer, but you're going to become so refined and fine-tuned 
in the depth that you bring yourself to in God, that you're going to have a hard time using something like a washing machine, something like a toaster or a stove or a refrigerator. Because these methods of civilization, these items of civilization, take us away from the basic and sometimes, most times, harder way of living. But all of us would admit that these things cause us to be lazy. Instead of spending two or three hours washing our clothes, 30 minutes, and they're done. I mean, without going into detail, you just stop and think about all the modern conveniences that you have in your life and how different your life would be if you did not have those things. But look at what else our text says. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, these are the things that we desire in the flesh. Today, those would be things like, obviously, food, sex, alcohol, drugs for many, cigarettes, And when I mention food, I'm not talking about three meals a day necessarily, but what about all the snacks in between? Every time your flesh craves something, you feed it. Start sacrificing yourself those things. Make yourself rely only upon three basic meals a day and cut out all the snacks, all of them, and watch your flesh flare up against you and become your greatest enemy. But he says, love the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the things that you see and want. I mean, television is horrible in the ideas that it plants in our minds. And you would be amazed at how free you would become without a television in your home. But there are many people that will not bring themselves to that type of sacrifice, sit down in front of the TV and watch commercial after commercial after commercial and sit there and say, I want that. I want one of those. I need one of those. I would love to go there. I would love to do that. This is what that is talking about. The lust of the eyes. The things that you see and you want where you are basically saying, I'm not content or satisfied with what you, my creator, the almighty, has blessed me with in this life. I want more. That's a dangerous place to be, friends. And finally, look at the last one, the pride of life. These things are not of the Father, but they are of this world. The pride of life. Someone offends you, and you go to them and say, I'm sorry. Well, wait a minute. I didn't do anything wrong. Why should I go and tell them I'm sorry? I would challenge you, if you were honest with yourself, what keeps you from that is pride. Pride rears its ugly head in our lives in in untold and unnumbered ways. Some are easy to see. Some go absolutely undetected, but it's still pride, friend. So as we do each and every day after our time together, I would encourage you to look into your life and see where these exist. Be honest with yourself. Be transparent. And if what you see is ugly and you don't like it, change it. You're the only one that can. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and yet expecting different results. Well, friends, if you want something different, you've got to do something different. So I pray and I hope that this has encouraged you and challenged you today to do that something that is different in your life. And that each and every day, as the Lord blesses you with each new day, that you will find something different to do that you will become a little bit more like the Father and a little bit less like this world. Now, I love you, friends. On that note, and until tomorrow, and of course, as Yahweh wills, I will see you on the next video.